Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial in C++ for beginners, we're going to look at while loops. So I'll create a new C++ project here. I'll, I'll use the Hello World project template. And um, another of the basic building blocks of computer programs are loops, because a computer program that just executes a load of statements and then finishes usually isn't much use. Often you want to do things repeatedly in programs. And the simplest um, way to do that is to use a while loop. Well, it's simplest when you're starting out, which is why I want to show you this. Although we're going to see um, nicer ways to do loops uh, later on. So um, supposing we want to repeat some code. Uh, to use a while loop, we need the keyword while and then round brackets and open and close curly bracket. So this pattern is the same as for if, and just like with if, we need a condition in here. Uh, so let, let's take the simplest example to start with of an infinite loop. I'm going to write while true here. And what's going to happen here is, is the code that I type in here, however many lines this is, can be multiple lines, is going to execute as long as the condition in while is true which it's always going to be true because the condition is literally the keyword true. So this is what we call an infinite loop. Let's, let's run this. And normally in your programs, you want to avoid infinite loops, but I'm just going to show you this as a demo. So I'm going to click run. And let's hit this stop button here. But we can see we've got hello coming out over and over again. It's going to keep doing that until it forever <laughs> or until it crashes or something. Um, so. This isn't very useful. What's more useful is to be able to out, um, output your lines of code in here uh, some particular number of times until something changes or um, until some limit is reached or something like that. So let's take a look at a simple example of that in, in the rest of this tutorial. So how, how can we have a condition that's going to change? Well. Let's suppose we want to output hello, I don't know, like five times. Let's, let's have a, um, a counter here. I'm going to say int i equals naught. Now, I, I've said before that you shouldn't give variables single letter names in general, but we'll make an exception for loop counters um, because uh, often when you have a loop, you need, you need a counter that will count the number of times the loop executes. And um, it, it's very common in this case just to use the single letter, usually I, uh, as your loop counter. But in general, you should give your variables more explicit names. And if you, even in a loop, if you can give uh, a loop counter a more explicit name, then it's, it's probably a good idea to do so. And we're going to say, while I is less than 6, or we could say, while well, i is less than or equal to 5, if we want this to execute 5 times. Now, at the moment, this is still an infinite loop. So if I run this, it's just going to say hello, 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 over and over again. But what I can do is I can change the value of i within the loop. So after I've output this line here, I'm going to say i equals i plus 1. So remember, um, statements are evaluated um, from the right to the left. So it's going to take 1 and add it to i and store it back in i. And that means every time this code executes, the value of i increases by 1. And what's going to happen is, um, so the, the program will, will start from the top down. And it's going to get to the while. And it's going to say, is this condition true? And well, is i less than or equal to 5? Yes. So it's going to execute the code within the brackets. And then it's going to come back to here again. And it's going to say, is i less than or equal to 5? And it's still going to be true. So it's going to execute the code in the brackets again. Eventually, i is going to be um, equal to 6. And then it's going to say here, is i less than or equal to 5? No. So then the loop's going to stop. And it's going to execute whatever's down here. So let's output here. Um, program quitting just so that we can see some stuff after the loop here and now let's run this um, now is that right in fact this is going to execute 
uh, six times right. So let's let's run this. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. First time it executes, i is zero, and then it adds one to i, so i is one. And then we run through zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got six iterations here. Um, and uh, for that reason, you often see in loops something like this. So you start i at zero, and you say while i is less than the, the limit that you want to reach, um, but less than it, because remember, you're going to execute it once when i is zero. So let's, let's run that. So now we've got five iterations of the loop here. So if you want your loop to execute five times, you start your loop counter at zero, and you say while i is less than five, that's the number of times you want it to iterate. To, to make it a little bit more clear what's happening here, let's also output the value of i here. Let's say, uh, I'll put space there, and here I'll put i, and um, I need another put to. And let's run that and see what that looks like. So um, here we can see that i was zero to start with when this first executed this code. And then we added one to it here. And then, then the next time it executes, it's one. Finally, it ends up being four. And then um, when the loop executes again, so we execute uh, this when the value of i is four down here. And then we're adding one to it, so now it's five. And we check the condition again, and now this is false. i is not less than 5, so it doesn't execute anymore. So we get 0 through to 4 executing. Again, something that can be a little bit puzzling when you first see it, but you just need to type it out yourself a little bit, play around with it a little bit to fully um, comprehend uh, what's going on here. Um, I think I think that's all I want to show you in this tutorial. Yeah, there's there's one there's one more little thing which is very very useful. Instead of writing i equals i plus one, there's a shorthand for this. We can just write i plus plus, and what that does is it increments i by one. Let's put a comment. Increments i by one, and that that will do exactly the same thing, but it's just a little bit shorter than typing i equals i plus 1. And it's very common to see um, this plus plus operator when you're working with loops. So let's, let's run that and we get exactly the same results. So to practice this, um, write a program, if you want to, that, um, that, out, that does something a fixed number of times that you've decided on. And make sure it actually does whatever you tell it to do, the exact number of times that you told it to execute. And also, don't, don't forget to indent stuff here within the, I, within, within the curly brackets of the, of the while by an extra tab. That's really important. Um, you don't have to have a space there. I've put one in because, I don't know, maybe it looks nicer. But that's kind of a question of, of taste. So you can put that line in or not. But um, as I mentioned before, it's, if you have lots of stuff within your loop, then it's good to... Um, to kind of split stuff up into logical blocks to help you read it. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, um, we will probably look at do while, I think, uh, and possibly at nesting stuff uh, within loops, nesting if statements within loops. Um, or certainly we're going to get onto that in the next tutorials, uh, the next few tutorials. So um, until next time, happy coding.